This is PMR Bones 88. And during the weekend, I went to the movies and theaters with my friends, and I saw it was Suicide Squad, starring Margaret Robbie, Will Smith, and Jerry Leto. The director, David Yarr, directed this film. I've been hearing a lot of negative reviews on every film critic. Most of them said it was bad, it was terrible, and it was the worst superhero movie ever. But when I saw it with my friends, it was good. It was actually a good, decent movie. The storyline was decent. Visual effects were very decent too. And the actors and actresses portraying their characters, they did a good job on it. And it, it was nice and crisp. I'm telling you guys the truth and I'm going to say it right now. It was, it was better than Batman v Superman. So this movie is about with all these villains working together and becoming the Suicide Squad. And the head boss of it, which was Amanda Waller, she brought all the villains from, from jail or from every supernatural world or every country. She wants to bring like all the all the villains to work together just to be a sort of superheroes. Well, not really superheroes, just to become heroes, but they're still bad guys. So this was almost using the new 52 comics, comics issues and uh, part of the anime movie of Batman Assault on Arkham. So we have all the villains, Harley Quinn, Deadshot, Killer Croc, Diablo, Chantress, and so on and so on. I cannot name all of them. So the most main characters are Harley Quinn, Deadshot, and the Joker, but he's not really part of the Suicide Squad team. He's just out looking for his Harley. And how they made the story background of each and every villain, what were their backgrounds and how they became their own true villain selves. The most interesting story ever was Joker and Harley Quinn's story. They were very interesting. And we see much more how did Harley Quinn became Harley Quinn, how she got so in love with the Joker, and how she got all crazy and insane. That was so interesting. I love the storyline and their backgrounds. See, that's what I'm talking about. That they don't rush it, they just like explain it and using more background stories of explaining their details and their lives. For unlike Batman v Superman, at least they didn't rush it too much. But they cut out so much that there were some details that were missing. Because that's why I was kind of concerned. They probably left a few things. In the trailers they do show them, but when it came in theaters, there were a few scenes that were cut out or alternated. I mean, that's why they want to make it as PG-13 for the kids to watch instead of making it rated R. But someone tells me that they are, once it comes on Blu-ray and DVD, they're probably going to have another special edition, just like Batman v Superman. Probably going to make it rated R or unrated. Who knows, right? And Jay Gordon playing as Captain Boomerang. At first, I thought he was going to mess it up, mess up the character. Ever since I saw him, the last movie of Terminator Genocide, where he played um, Kyle Reese, that he kind of messed up with the character, how he floated up. But in Suicide Squad, he didn't mess up. For Captain Boomerang, he was um, very crazy, he was sinister, he was sarcastic, and he was kind of a funny dude. And that's how his character that he portrayed, it was very well done. And as for um, Chandra's that was played by Sierra Delavinge, she was... Wow. Her character was so sinister, so unbelievable, that she went from being good to being the doctor and then turned to the evil sinister witch. And minor spoiler alert, that she is the main villain that they have to face off, not the Joker. You know, I'm really glad that uh, Ben Affleck returned to play as Batman again. But if you're all thinking that he's going to fight up the Suicide Squad, don't get your high hopes on it. Now, there's uh, the team members, they're kind of different, and 
the only original teams that I know back then are Deadshot, Farley, and Captain Boomerang. For somehow, some reason, that King Shark was in the Suicide Squad teams, but in the movie, he was replaced by Killer Croc. According to the sources, that they don't want a CGI character to be in it. That's why he was replaced with um, Killer Croc, so they wanted like a real person wearing makeup scales to make him look like he was a mutated crocodile. Killer Croc was my second favorite, besides um, Harley and Joker. Joker is definitely and always will be my number one favorite. But back to Killer Croc, his makeup was very good, and he almost looked like he was a, a giant mutating crocodile monster. He's big and strong, but he isn't that bright. You know, Jerry Leto portraying as the Joker, I thought at first he was going to mess it up, but eventually he didn't. He, he played a good job of playing the character, the psychological clown prince of crime. What bothered me the most was, besides the tattoos where the grizz on his teeth kind of bothered me, but I didn't really look at it too much, and eventually when, every time when he gets so up close, and when I see the grills on his teeth, it's like, ugh. It reminds me so much of that Metal Mouth from one of the 007 movies. Yeah, it kind of rem he kind of reminds me of that. And Margaret Robbie playing as Harley Quinn, I was so surprised. She did a good damn job of playing that role. She was like so crazy and she kept saying Puddin and Mr. J. And that's what I was looking for. I wanted to say those two words when she's with the Joker. It's Mr. J and Puddin and she did a great job on it, on playing the character. If she ever comes back in the solo Batman movies or if they ever make a Suicide Squad 2 movie, I'll be happy if she ever returns. And Will Smith did a good job playing the bad guy. This was actually the first time that I ever see Will Smith playing as a bad guy. He never plays that kind of role. But as Deadshot, he did a great job. He knows how to kick ass. Including there were some jokes and puns, but not too much, just a little bit. But most of the time, I always laugh. And the music that they put on that every single music, some were necessary and some were quite unnecessary. Like, they didn't really have to put too many music, but it's all just to advertise them and to make them look as Suicide Squad of who they are and how they use it. And one thing they didn't really use was um, Queen's music. I forgot the name of the song, but it's... I just don't remember. I really... I just can't get it, get it out of my head. So overall, is Suicide Squad worth watching it? Yeah! I would say, once again, give it a chance. Do not criticize it, and do not say it's the worst movie of all, and say, no, I'd rather just watch it on Blu-ray, or wait, wait till it comes on Netflix. No. Just watch it. It's a great film. You will not be disappointed. At all. So, just to rate this film, for Suicide Squad, I'm gonna have to give it a 8.5 out of 10. A good, decent, villain, <laughs> my hero movie but it's worth watching and hopefully if they ever make Suicide Squad sequel I'll definitely be looking forward and with all the actors and actresses playing their roles they did a great job too and I would definitely say that once again Jerry Leto and Margaret Robbie playing as Joker and Holly Quinn great job and I hope Jerry Leto does come back so he can fight Batman so I will be looking forward when it comes on Blu-ray and DVD. And this is Pierre Marbones88 signing off and saying is... Peace! Oh, and there's one more thing. After from the movies, I decided to pick up was... Batman The Killing Joke on Blu-ray and DVD. It's a great cover. Almost just like the graphic novels. So I'm going to watch it again. I saw it um, probably during the weekend when I was hanging out with my friend's house. So be looking forward to it when I uh, review this movie. Peace.